Hi guys, while we all know what it's like to believe in something wrong, and then to find out we were wrong, this is an everyday occurrence to scientists. Whoa, who would have thought scientists were wrong? Please note, I am not open for further comments on this matter. Anyway, the Aether wasn't just a disappointment to our childhoods. It was a disappointment to physicists as well. Speaking of memes, that's kind of what the Aether is. You see, a meme is an idea traveling through a medium, such as an image, piece of text, a video, or unga bungas. Anything the idea can use to travel from one brain to another, really. And comparatively, the Aether was the medium light uses to travel through. Back in the good old days of Aristotle, not to be confused with an Aries turtle or an Erase turtle, in Aristotelian physics, he posited that everything was made up of five elements, earth, water, air, fire, and a special fifth element called aether. Each of the four elements were believed to be able to change from one to another. Like here on this graph, if a water element went from wet and cold to hot and wet, it'd turn into air, which actually makes a lot of sense. Dry earth, or material believed to be made from dry earth, such as trees, can really easily turn into fire. Likewise, water can evaporate into air. In these ways, the elements are changing, or capable of generation and corruption, as the man himself put it. But the aether is unchanging in these ways. All of the elements want to fall into their natural state. Earth falls below water, illustrated by sediments settling in murky water. Bubbles rise above water, like bubbles boiling in bubbling water. The aether's natural state, however, is above all of them. Up in the distant sky, where some may say the heavens are. According to Greek mythology, the aether is pure clean air that the gods themselves breathe. The planets and stars in the night sky were believed to be crystallized aether, and the motions of the planets and stars were due to celestial spheres, kind of like whirlpools in the aether. These celestial spheres moved the celestial bodies. Another name for the aether is quintessence, and it was believed to exist here on Earth in small amounts, and consuming it was believed to cure many ailments. One way to get this quintessence was to distill alcohol eight times, which no friggin' wonder they thought it cured things. Show me one case humans didn't believe the cure for something was to take a swig of an alcoholic beverage. Go on. I'll wait. So as you can tell, the aether was like a stopgap to explain the unexplainable at the time. Namely, what the frick is happening in space, and what are the stars and planets, and why are they moving? Anyway, moving on from the distant past, we arrive at the not-as-distant past. In the 1700s, a debate was taking place as to whether light was a wave or a particle. Huygens was making claims that light is a wave, but a young Isaac Newton came out of the woodwork and was shook because he had his own idea of light, and it wasn't a wave. It was particles all the way down, baby. This meant Huygens and Newton had a good old-fashioned showdown of ideas, but instead of pointing guns at each other, the scientific community would have all the guns, and they unfortunately shot down Huygens' light-as-a-wave theory. My baby, my poor, poor baby, leaving Newton's light particles as the victor. But that couldn't be, the physicists thought to themselves. Look, the light is waving. Yep, that's right. In the early 1800s, some experiments were being made by a young Thomas Young. Wait, I just mean a normal Thomas Young, which showed that actually, yes, light is a wave, and another guy named Fresnel said the same thing, also saying how light being a wave and all requires a medium for it to propagate through. This is some groundbreaking stuff. The only problem now was, if light is a wave, what is the medium it waves across? To illustrate this problem, we can look at sound and how sound requires a medium to propagate. For example, I'll play back a sound and we'll listen together and figure out the why behind sound. Aw oh shit, fart on my roommate's door, ha! You see, if you imagine the cheeks clapping together, This is sound in a nutshell. Back to the aether, the aether once again became relevant in the domain of physics as an explanation for the medium light waves across. From there, light as a wave took off and gained widespread acceptance. The aether at this point seemed like a done deal, almost as done of a deal as a son of a seal. Light is definitely a wave, which means it has to have some sort of universe permeating medium it propagates through, right? 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 It wasn't until the Michelson-Morley experiment that hoped to bring further evidence that the Aether existed that the Aether met its demise. 
which is kind of ironic. It's like going in to hug your friend to make sure they're real and not a hallucination of your brain to make you less lonely, only to find out your friend isn't there and it never was. Here, I'll hold your hand. Come on, let's go. Let's take a trip across the field of understanding. To help understand the experiment, let's think of a plane that flies through the air at a constant speed. Now let's say there's a circle and it takes a certain amount of time to get across that circle. That's all fine and dandy. Now let's introduce wind into this situation. Going the same direction, you can see it takes longer. Why is that? Well, if you notice the wind, the wind is actually pushing in more air into the circle for the plane to travel through. Another way to think about it is that the circle is moving through the air, which, if we focus on the circle's frame of reference, looks no different than the stationary but windy circle situation. If the plane goes in any other direction, the time it takes to reach the other side changes. This is the same idea behind the Michelson-Morley experiment. The Earth is like a giant circle moving through space. The wind is the aether, and the plane is light. Because the Earth is moving at a kind of fast speed around the sun, there should be a detectable aether drift, and all we have to do is measure the speed of light in two different directions to detect the aether. Boom! There we go. The experiment splits a beam of light and has them travel in two different directions. When combining the beams of light, they will interfere with each other. Now, if we rotate the entire setup, the beams will change in speed, presumably because of an aether, and the interference pattern will change. Except that's famously not what happened. It came to a shock to the scientific community. Morley himself never fully accepted the results and took to his grave, believing the aether is still out there. When Einstein visited Morley on his deathbed, Morley's daughter begged him not to get him started on the aether again. I'm so glad the Aether isn't real. <laughs> so here lies the remains of the Aether, giving way for new theories that better explain light and the things around us. Like electromagnetism. You know, that universe permeating field that light waves are. Hey, wait a minute, that sounds oddly similar to the Aether medium. By golly, I think Morley was right. There still is an Aether. No, no, he's still wrong. Dead wrong. Get it? Because he's dead. <laughs> a medium and a field are quite different concepts, but they do sound really similar. While a medium is referring to a physical substance, like water or air, a field is more abstract. A field isn't really any thing. A field is just a value at every point in space. It's something we use to describe a physical quantity, such as magnetism or gravity. Because electromagnetism, or light, is a field, it eliminates the need for a medium, and so it also explains how it can travel through the vacuum of space. One big difference between a medium and a field is that a medium provides a universal reference frame, which means that the speed of light will change based on your motion through the medium, like the idea behind the Michelson-Morley experiment. But we don't observe that to be the case with light, and instead what best explains light is Einstein's special relativity, where the speed of light is the same for all observers, no matter if they're going fast or slow. There's still one remnant of the aether left though, and that's kind of the Higgs field. Universe permeating thing? Check. Interacts with other things? Check. Fundamentally different concepts? Uh, we'll just ignore this one. The Higgs field is this universe permeating field that gives particles mass. You can almost think of it as having to wade through water. There's a resistance to it, and the faster or more you interact with the water, the more drag you'll experience. This drag through the Higgs field is what gives the particle mass. So in a way, a very, very loose way, the Higgs field is like the medium a particle travels through that gives the mass. Now, I know this video was ethereal and quintessentially the best video you've ever seen broadcast on the ethernet, but it's time for me to go now. Bye bye